Welcome to Vines View. In the summer of 1994, a small group of people sat around a kitchen table, much like we are here today, and discussed how to create a safe and effective way for people to help their neighbors. And thus, Find Faith in Action began by developing a simple organization where volunteers who wanted to help were matched with people who needed a helping hand. Throughout the years, the organization has grown to fit the needs of those looking to age to the max, caring for themselves and others regardless of their years or means. Vine provides older adults with services directed at keeping them happy, healthy, and living independently in their own home for as long as possible. These services include chores, transportation, peer mentoring, Meals on Wheels, medical equipment loan, caregiver support, and social, educational, health, and fitness opportunities. Each month, we will be showcasing a different program or service that Vine offers in the greater Mankato community. This month, we are going to be talking about Vine's Caring Connection program. With us today, we have Sister Joyce from Vine, Vine volunteer Judy, and Vine care receiver Eric. Welcome, everyone. Joyce, can you start us off by giving us a little bit about the history of the Caring Connection program and telling us what exactly it is? I sure can. Really, Caring Connection uh, began when Vine started, although it wasn't called that. But as you can imagine, any organization that focuses on helping people involves visiting. And really, Caring Connection is a visiting program. About 12 years ago, it became more of a formal program called Caring Connection. And it's flourishing today with the help of our volunteers and people like Eric, who are looking for someone to come on a regular basis to visit. So it, it's all about creating a relationship through a regular visit. And how do you pair up those individuals, those volunteers and the care receivers? Well, the first thing I do is do an initial visit and or through our Vine intake um, process, which might be done by one of the other staff members, uh, they'll give me a referral to somebody um, who I would go and say, uh, we have this wonderful visiting program. Usually the people are more isolated or going through a major life transition or a loss uh, of a family member or spouse and just needing additional support and encouragement. So I will go and interview them myself, find out their background, their interests, um, what their hobbies are, and then honestly, I come back and browse through my volunteers <laughs> and, and pray for the right match. Mm -hmm. And um, if the right match doesn't work right away and the first mm -hmm. meeting occurs and it just doesn't work out, um, I guess what happens next? Well, and sometimes that does, uh, and human nature is such that um, sometimes it's just not the right fit. So I tell the people right up front, both the volunteer and the care receiver, don't just endure this relationship. Mm -hmm. Let me know, call me, and just say, Joyce, I don't think this is gonna work out. And I, I will find a new volunteer, and um, then we just, and then I'll find another care receiver for the volunteer. And I've never had to say to, some, to a volunteer, I just don't think this is your, your fit. Mm -hmm. There's always another person that I can find. Um, Eric, you're a part of the Caring Connection program. Um, how did you get involved with it, or how did you hear about it? Well, I heard about it from Sister Joyce. <laughs> I had requested uh, to be part of the transportation program that they had. Mm -hmm. And uh, I get a phone call from Sister Joyce, but she didn't say Sister Joyce. <laughs> she said Joyce. <laughs> and. Uh, she said, I need to do an interview with you and fill an application, mm -hmm. see what your uh, handicaps might be and stuff like that before we get you into the program. Mm -hmm. This was a transportation program. So she comes and introduces me as Joyce Cabret. And uh, we sit down opposite, face to face from the desk, and we're talking. And you know, one thing led to another, and found out we go to the same church. <laughs> And then uh, she says she teaches, you know, she's in charge of the music at the church. And she used to teach. And I said, well, where did you teach it? Uh, east or west? And she's not. Taught at Loyola. I said, oh, you're a good Catholic girl. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the conversation went on. And for, first of all, then I realized that I am talking to Sister Joyce. The Sister Joyce. <laughs> right. And, uh, <laughs> And it's kind of ironic because I was—I went to Catholic grade schools. I went to Catholic 
um, high school, Catholic college. Mm -hmm. So sisters were part of my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, so I don't want to tell you what part of the life, but uh, you know, they were part of my life. So and you listen to what they did. tell you. So we had a, we had a, <laughs> we had a good conversation. And, and then uh, she says, uh, she brought it up about the caring program. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, geez, I'd be interested in that. You know, mm -hmm. I'm kind of homebound most of the time, you know, I get tired of talking to myself. You know, you know. So, Same story over right. and over so again. So she right? said she'd get back to me, see if she can find a suitable perks. Well, she couldn't have found anybody better. <laughs> I mean, uh, Dan Nelson uh, was a caregiver. He come over and we talking, and he, he was a machinist. I was a machinist. Mm -hmm. He worked for GE. I worked for GE. Different states and uh -huh. stuff like that. And um, you know, he he said something about you know he'd come over once a week and he'd probably talk for an hour or whatever. <laughs> well, it, it, it's it's once a week, but it's at least three hours we're mm -hmm. together. Um, uh, we do a lot of, you know, we solve all the world problems in those three <laughs> hours, you know. And uh, so I know a lot about Dan. Uh, he knows a lot about me. We've been doing it for over a year. Mm -hmm. uh, so every week he's there. Yeah. So it was a good fit right away then. Oh, a good fit. Uh, yeah, we got a lot of lot in common. And I can I just add? Oh yeah. I. Um, I know that Dan would, if he were here, he would say how good this experience is for him too, and how meaningful it is in his life to be able to look forward to this visit. Well, he said that to me too. Yeah. You know, so it's kind mm -hmm. of a 50-50 situation, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, Judy, you're a volunteer for Vine, and you um, helped <laughs> with the Caring Connection program. Um, how did you find out about it, and how did you get involved? I've been involved with Vine. I was trying to think how many years, but before I retired in 2000. So then I was on their board. So I go back a long time and I, I just have always think, I've always grown up with wanting um, people to help people. I, mm -hmm. you know, I've had my mother lived with us, my husband's mother lived with us. I have, um, I like working with elderly people and I've had two two people that have been part of Caring Connection. And they and I always said, Caring Connection is till death do us part. <laughs> and that's how they both have ended, is upon the death of the person. But I so much agree with what you said. It is, um, it's an in-depth relationship. It is not, it's not just surface. It is so much more than that. It is, you spend a lot of time, you really do get to know someone. and. One of the first thing I, things I asked Joe to do was to list all of her children and how old they were and where they were so that I could begin to, she had seven children. So mm -hmm. when she talked about her kids, I wanted to be able to um, get to know which ones they were. And one of the good things about both of my experiences have been to get to know the families. I mean, these are such nice families. Mm -hmm. I've enjoyed them both very much. Yep. Um, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I, was, I was just going to say, she said it to the T, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a two way street. You know, and I have, I have nine daughters. So, oh, wow. <laughs> we, got, we got a lot to talk about. You know, and, so, we do a lot of talking. Mm -hmm. so, so, we got, you know, we've got the same kind of interests and whatnot, and we'll go out mm -hmm. and have pie, we drive around, do whatever, you know. So, so. it's not just staying in your home, no, sometimes it's no, going no. out. No, but you know, a lot of times we do, you know, mm -hmm. drink a lot of coffee. And, yeah. <laughs> we would go out for lunch. We decided we were going out, going out for lunch every time we're together. So we would start, we used to start like at noon, and then we got to the, the days weren't long enough, so we had to start like around 10. <laughs> and sometimes it would be six, seven hours, and we would travel, we would go places. I often say that I introduced her to thrift stores, and she was an <laughs> avid reader, so, you know, the choice of many books. She introduced me to some of her favorite books. But yeah, it was, and we were connoisseurs of good food. <laughs> <laughs> you knew all the good spots. We uh, did know the good spots, yep. 
And Judy, you kind of mentioned that you um, recently lost uh, your Caring Connection friend, Joe. Do you mind talking a little bit about that? I, she was my partner for about two years. Mm-hmm. And um, during that period of time, I think it was the first fall that we, she, her ki- she had kidney failure and renal failure. And so I went with her to all of her appointments in North Minneapolis to get her prepared for dialysis. And that was a total, I mean, a real learning experience for me. It was humbling, very humbling. And then came back and then she had dialysis three days a week. So we'd always have to work around that because mm-hmm. that, so that was Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So we either had Tuesday or Thursday. Um, and then it, I, I've said oftentimes that aging is a thing of a succession of losses and then got to the point where um, she was not going to be driving anymore. And that was a really big deal for her because that was part of her independence. Real, a big, and it is a big part of yes. independence, That's driving. Really yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. it's huge. So, um, but we we kind of had a circuit and I, she died on a Friday. She died the last Friday of September. And that Thursday, she and I, went to Faribault, went to the depot for lunch, just the two of us, and talked about what a great thing it was that we could be there with our Bloody Marys <laughs> and, and the good food and the great conversation. And just, you know, and that, that day I promised her that we would go, as long as there were leaves, each time we'd go one direction out of Mankato. So the next, Thursday was going to be go north, so we'd have gone to Lesur or Belle Plaine or someplace, and then New Ulm, and then we were going to go back down to Fairmont. We'd been in, we had been in Fairmont one day, and we were going to go back there. So she, it was the most marvelous day. It is the way I will always remember her that day. Um, just, and then the next day I was going to take her to dialysis, and when I went to pick her up, they said she had um, been taken to the hospital. And I, honestly, I didn't worry about her because I was like, well, good, she's safe there. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't know what the circumstances were, but that was the day she died then on Friday after that marvelous Thursday. Mm. So, And this was such a comfort to Joe's family, knowing mm-hmm. that she had had such a remarkable oh, day was, with you. It was so wonderful. Yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't say more. And then the other good thing is that I have her cat. <laughs> I have her cat Brady, who is 15 and a half years old, and now is known as Tommy Brady. <laughs> and you know, I can't look at him without thinking about her. Mm-hmm. It was. A, it was. And I. And she always said to me, "Well, how long? Will, how long? You know, with everything that happens to me." And I always said to her, "Till death do us part." I mean, this, that is the commitment that I made to her. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that. Great. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Um, Eric, can you kind of talk a little bit about, since you've been doing the visits with Dan, has it kind of changed your life a little bit or? Well, yeah, I, you know, we kind of, it's either Wednesday or Thursday that we meet. Mm-hmm. So you look forward to that, you mm-hmm. know, and so you plan, you know, and, and that makes, you know, we, uh, uh, same with Dan. You, you knew, usually he'll call me in the morning, everything okay? Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. Uh, so we just uh, do our thing. Uh, I have you know, my wife bring in sweets, and, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and we drink coffee, we talk a lot, uh, talk a lot. Mm-hmm. And uh, I couldn't uh, uh, express how much I am really grateful for Dan and also sister. <laughs> you know, did a great match, great match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's good. He's a good guy, and uh, and we're good to each other. I mean, we're yeah. good for each <laughs> other. Yeah. Mutual relationship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we do look forward to it. He looks forward to it too. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, so we don't try to miss a week. You know, I mean, so it's, it's something you should plan for and you make it happen. Mm-hmm. You know. Um. Judy, how about you? How, how would you say volunteering um, through the Caring Connections program has changed you? 
I think I'm more, I become more and more aware of, you know, when I said the losses, you know, kind of the aging process, because I, I mean, it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. And it's a big deal as we age and as things happen to us. And I'm, I'm big on supporting each other and being good to, good to each other, you know, and I knew I knew Joe before you matched us, but I didn't really know her. Right. I mean, she was mm -hmm. an acquaintance, but I didn't really know her. But you know, there were lots. It, it was amazing, lots of similarities that we that we had. You know, when we started talking about both of our husbands had her husband had Parkinson's, mine has Parkinson's. That book thing. I mean, love books. And then I like beer. You can <laughs> take this out. <laughs> and and she would occasionally like a glass of beer. But it was so it was everything was so it just was so fun. It and was. And you love cats. And we love cats. <laughs> yes, she had two, and yeah. at that time I had two. Right. Actually, I probably had three when I started with her. Right. Yeah. But there were so many things that we would talk about that were, you know, some of them were trivial, and some of them were. You know, I, with all of her health issues, like I learned a lot about dialysis and I learned a lot about how that controls your life and your, mm -hmm. I mean, you plan everything around dialysis, you know? And then I, you know, I loved her family. Her family was wonderful. They, it was, you know, I've met new people that I think are just great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. And I, I love how supportive families are. And it's, you're not taking anybody's place. You're just adding one more piece to the puzzle, mm -hmm. you know? And I think it becomes more important, like, if you're not driving, you know, once that car is not a part of your life, yeah. that is a huge deal Absolutely. for anybody. Yeah, yeah. huge mm -hmm. deal. I think your, your family has invited Dan over, too. Yes. For yes. holidays or... Yep. Family gatherings. And we, we tried to get sister there, but she's so dang busy. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you know, she, what, really. She's got so many people that want her everywhere. Right. You know? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, so Dan's met a lot of my family, yeah. which I have a lot of family, but every time he comes over, uh, maybe some other daughter would be over there. So he's, well, which one's this one? Yeah. yeah. But uh, so he's met quite a few of my kids uh, through the talking process you, you really uh, you know go through your life you know sure. and stuff like that and the same with him um, so mm -hmm. I do most of the talk and he does a lot of the listening but you mm -hmm. know but he he can talk he can talk so we do have a good time together we do have a good time and mm -hmm. time goes by fast I mean uh, just fast mm -hmm. you know, so Sometimes we can't get everything solved. So. <laughs> That's for next time. Right, <laughs> right. Um, I guess any of you can answer this question, but do you have any interesting stories or fun stories that you would want to share? Um, I don't, I mean, with you mean with Dan? Yeah, uh, just with the program. Uh, you know, I don't know if, you know, the, like I said, you know, the, you might, most people might think it's boring that we just sit around and, and talk. Mm -hmm. and drink coffee and uh, whatever. I mean, we'll go for a ride, we'll go see the bison down there and mm -hmm. once upon 69, stuff like that. Um, um, no, I, I don't know if we got anything funny to say, you know, I just, <laughs> uh, I'm just a very appreciative of the program, really am. And uh, I look forward to it. Dan looks forward to it. And uh, so that's what makes it happen and that's what makes it good. Mm -hmm. We have one uh, volunteer who has two care receivers, and um, they do an outing every Wednesday to the Thirsty Beaver, which is a local uh, yeah. establishment out in uh, Elysian. And um, so John picks up his care receivers, and together they go. And I've, I've gone with them on occasion just to see if they're really having a visit. Right, right. <laughs> and uh, they meet other locals at, at the Thirsty Beaver, and the, the gentleman who um, has the bar there has their popcorn ready, their Coca-Colas ready when they come in, and they just enjoy a visit, and then they go out for dinner afterward. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And sometimes uh, one of the spouses of the care receiver goes along, which gives her a nice outing too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So every one of these caring connections really are very unique. Mm -hmm. They're as unique as the two individuals or three individuals that are part of it. And they decide how they will spend the time and, and how they'll build that rapport. Mm. So. And how does someone um, get involved with the program, whether it be volunteering or as the care receiver? <clears throat> well, the care receivers um, hear about the program in our intake process, or I might hear from a family member or um, a case manager at the hospital, a, a local pastor, social worker, um, that somebody could benefit from this program. Mm -hmm. And then I do the visit and tell them about it and give them time to think about it. Most people don't need a whole lot of time to think about it. They say, yeah, I think I'd like that. Mm -hmm. And then, as I said, I, I look for the volunteer. The volunteers hear about it during our volunteer orientation, which is monthly at Vine. And usually when I, I get to know those volunteers, you know, the, the qualities I look for would be people who are good listeners, people who are comfortable in a one-to-one -one setting mm -hmm. with conversing, and people who can readily offer encouragement and support to another. So those are some of the things I look for. And is there a training process to go through the program? Other than orientation, yes. I, I meet one-on-one -on -one with the individual to tell them some of the background about the person they're gonna be meeting, mm -hmm. and just to talk about some of the, uh, the program. Um, details. So other than that, uh, there is, there's no other training. Okay. And is there a waiting list to get involved in this? Are you always looking for volunteers? I'm always looking for volunteers. <laughs> always. In fact, just yesterday and today, I have two people who are looking for um, a visitor. So, and I do have two people that I can call. So I always like to have at least a few extras mm -hmm. so that I can readily and in touch with them. Mm -hmm. And is there a fee for any of this service to be involved in the program? There isn't a fee for Caring Connection. Um, people, however, are very generous. Um, I tell people if they can occasionally give a donation to Vine, we are very grateful for that, and many do. Mer many of our care receivers do. And Judy, what would you say to someone that might be interested in volunteering with the Caring Connection program? Would you recommend it? Oh, absolutely. But I, I, th I think people need to really think about the commitment that it is, that it isn't, that I really do think it is forever, you mm -hmm. know, because I, as Joe's life was changing, like, like um, a couple weeks before she died, she moved into assisted living and that would be, so I, I would follow her there. I mean, I would be, you know, her life's changing, but she still needs she still, I, she would still need the same kind of mm -hmm. um, visiting and going out. So, yeah. But yes, I. It's my second time. I, I didn't know that I would do it again because I thought, you know, the ending. It's hard. Mm -hmm. The ending is very hard, and um, I didn't know that I'd ever do it again. And I, but. <laughs> when Sister but Joyce asked. Sister Joyce, yeah, I, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm, of course I'm glad I did. It was wonderful, mm -hmm. absolutely wonderful. And Eric, how about you? Would you um, recommend the program to someone who's maybe just looking for a I'm pal sure, to talk to? I sure to? would. <laughs> uh, you know, I, the thing is, I don't know if a lot of people know it exists, the program. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and like I said, I, I didn't know it existed so sister happened to be talking about another program, and she brought that up. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I welcomed it right away. And I'm sure to other people in my particular shoes, they'd welcome it as well, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so, yeah, I'd recommend it. I don't know how we could market it so that everybody knows it exists. Mm -hmm. Although now I get a Vine newsletter, so I, you know, I, I know what everything's date. going on there now. And KTV. Yeah, and KTV. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the more people that know about it just means the more volunteers we need. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yes. Because if we don't have yes. those volunteers, right. there's not much we can do, right? Right. And right now we have 45 individuals who all have a volunteer. So wow. that's, 
That's 90 people. And we started, or throughout the year, we've had 55 people involved. And 10 people either have died or their life circumstances have changed. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's a lot of volunteers mm. in you, one program. Do you know um, the longest Caring Connection You know, I was pair? thinking about that, and I think we've had a pair, well, one of the pairs right now has been involved for five years. Okay. A long time. Yeah. And there, there could have been longer ones before I started. Do you know how long, on average, most pairs do uh, stay together? I would say um, the ones, they all continue until death do you part. <laughs> um, yeah. But so I, I really don't know the average. Mm -hmm. But I would say three to five for sure. Okay. Um, is there anything else that we missed that you want to make sure we cover? I just want to say thank you to all of the participants in Caring Connection, all of the care receivers who have been open to this service, and the volunteers who say, yes, I would love to do it. And to you who supports mm -hmm. us. You right. support us yeah. at the same time. You're the one who deserves a thanks. Yep. Oh, thank you. Not us, <laughs> You're <Yeah>. welcome. <laughs> She's a miracle I think you, matchmaker. You are the one that we go to as we see mm -hmm. things happening, and um, mm -hmm. you're you're there to support us mm -hmm. in whatever happens next. So that's it is important. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a it's a privilege for me to do. Thank you. Great program. Very mm -hmm. good, great. And that's a good point, Judy. What you brought up um, is that you know, you might start that program with that person, but you're still checking in with Joyce, mm -hmm. right. um, letting her know what's going on with that individual, and Joyce is there to, to help maybe advise or direct. Yeah, just needed. this morning I made a hospital visit because a volunteer called me yesterday and said, want you to know that my friend is in the hospital and uh, here's what's going on. So today I had the opportunity to go and visit. And I'm, you know, the reality is that when we call you, it's almost always, it's not a fun thing. It's almost always something mm -hmm. that's happening in somebody's life mm -hmm. that, you know, you're sharing and to kind of keep you up to date on, and, you know, lots of it's medical. Mm -hmm. True. Mm -hmm. Or life issues. Right. Life changes for them. Yeah. yeah. Well, anything else any of you want to add? Well, I'll just uh, substantiate the uh, uh, sister uh, does f make phone calls. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, one time I, I wasn't feeling too good, and Dan happened to be down there talking to her, and, and next thing you know, I get a phone call from her. What's mm -hmm. going on? You know, how are you mm -hmm. feeling? You know, so she's a very caring person, and uh, like I say, without her, I don't know if the program would be as good as it is, really. Mm -hmm. uh, so, great, thank you, sister. Great coordinator. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, thank you all for coming on the program today and sharing your stories with us. Um, that's all we have. If you'd like to learn more about Vine's Caring Connection program, please visit vinevolunteers.com or you can call 507-387-1666. Thanks for tuning in today, neighbor. We'll see you next time.